Hi, this is Ron Janish, and if you notice, for the past, oh, six, seven months or so, I haven't been making very many videos, and uh, there's a reason for that, and namely because I've been involved in a project, and I'm going to show you what we've done, what we've accomplished, and what you'll learn in the process is the exact techniques that we used for uh, developing and improving a trading system. We'll show you some of them. So, uh, without further ado, here we go. So, what we we started with was a, a system whereby um, you you simply let's go over here. I got to do this. Ah, right, here we go. MZ Alpha Sort. Okay, we started with a system whereby you um, you're looking for prices to do three things. You're looking for them to turn at a specific point. That's all predetermined before you ever test it. You're looking for them to do a breakaway pattern and you're looking for them to return. So for example, if they break past a trend line, they would return back towards it and uh, that and the bottom of the move. Okay, because they'll say they go from, uh, from a low of zero up to a one down to a two, uh, that the zero would have been at a significant turning point that was a specific formula that was predetermined. For example, uh, in the it could be at a median line, for example. Uh, in, in the wonderful world of Fibonacci, they might say, gee, that price has turned at a 50% point. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what happened there. So, so we did that system and we tested it out over three years. And uh, let's see, how long was this period here? Uh, started to 18, 17, 18. Yeah. So, so we tested it out first on over 2019 and, and the results we got were like spectacular. It was like over 80% of the trades were profitable and it just made a ton and a half of money. And so, you know, that, that was real nice and all that, but one year really isn't enough of data. So since we're trading uh, daily data here, what we did was we, add, we added two more years. So we did the test on 2017 and 2018 and combined it and still had reasonable numbers. I will tell you that in 17 and 18, there were more losses than there were in 2019. For some reason, 2019 was just a spectacular year. And we're talking about uh, doing this with 37 different futures. So, you know, it's not just ES or, or the NASDAQ NQ. It's also uh, cotton and cattle and stuff like that. Well, one of the things we found is that in order to uh, make the system really powerful, we had to exclude certain futures. And so we wound up excluding a few of those. And you can see here the ones we excluded. And then we looked at it and said, and just said, well, maybe this is a way we can do something that's better than this. And so, because, because quite frankly, when you start excluding certain ones and, and, and doing all this stuff to optimize it, it can get really, really messy. So, uh, and in the future, it doesn't work well. So what we did was we went on to a totally different approach and we tested it out in the two hour time frame, And so we tested it out in a two hour time frame, and it did very nicely. Uh, we tested about a year and a half and we, we stopped doing this test oh, somewhere in, in June, I think. And, and the results were, oh, somewhere around, uh, hmm, uh, yeah, somewhere around 300,000. And so it, it did real nicely and we decided to take it to the next level and see what else we can do with it. Because one of the things that we learned, which was really fascinating to me, was that we could take we we developed along the way an indicator that said, well, what happens if we uh, take 
take a look at it at, at one level up. So, and then have four criteria and then uh, see what happens under the different criteria. So what we did was, here, let, let me just take this thing here and do it. I'll show you what I mean. Um, I should go reasonably fast. And this wound up, this was real fascinating. So you understand the test was done on intraday data. So, so we did the test on intraday data. We did it on, on two hour data and we came out with a test result that would impress most people uh, in a year and a half. Uh, there was a very nice number of trades, uh, close to a thousand, I think, let's see, nine, and 950, that's close to a thousand. And what we got was, we got about $300,000 was the profit on the system we tested. So we tried something a little different. We, we had those four criteria, okay? So we take those four criteria and we, we categorize them, okay? So what do I mean by criteria? Well, the specific thing we used was proprietary, but if I was using Fibonacci, I might have a criteria of uh, on the daily, did it make back 50%, 61.8, uh, 38% or uh, 70, 72% or, you know, different, different uh, ways of looking at it. So which one of those was true? And so we had our four criteria, but we had it with Andrew's techniques. Now remember with Andrew's techniques, you can have a good variety of criteria that you can use. And especially when it comes to action reaction lines. So let's see what happens now. So we sort of, let's do a sort on this. And what we found was, was that, you know, you had a decent distributions of winners and losses in, in each category, except when you got to one of those categories. And, and the, in this category, they, it was just incredibly red. So you just lots and lots of losers. So we looked at that and we said, well, what would happen if we took this a step further? And so what we did on a step further is we decided to uh, test this out on on, on four hour. Okay, so we tested out on four hour and let me, uh, I, I already did this. So we tested it out on four hour and let me show you what happened. We found that in, in one category, let's call this category B, category B had uh, made a few thousand, made five or six thousand dollars over the last year and a half or so. And, but cat, oh, this was category C rather, made it made about five or six thousand dollars. So it was a poor performer. And the horrible performer was category D, which just, you know, nearly everyone was red, it was a loser there. So I said, oh, okay. And then when we took see if I can fix this here. Um, see, cause, cause those two categories together would have lost about $46,000. That's the overall performance of those two categories alone. And category D just absolutely killed it. So let's see what happens here. If we, uh, Okay, so what happened was we we looked at it again and said, well, what if we only use category A and B for our for the things we'll actually trade or consider trading? And so we came up with this here. Let me see where it would 
start and I'm going to I'm going to give you a nice little show you a nice little equity curve. Then I'm going to show you how we improved it. Okay, so here's the chart. Boom. Now this was the chart. I mean, it, it over this period of time, it did over four hundred and fifty thousand dollars or so. Okay, but notice the, the these these down moves here, and the, these are these are you know this is assuming you start with an account of a hundred thousand, and you're you're using that to to work this here. Because uh, in, in futures, you have all this wonderful leverage. And uh, and this here, this down move here, was effectively about uh, $15,000, dollars Okay, so you had down draw of $15,000, dollars So what we really like to see is a much smoother equity curve here. Now, I'll show you what we did. It's so simple, it's mind-boggling. We added a criteria that simply said, if you have a loss of a certain amount, you get out. Simple as that. Let's take a look. Okay, here we go. Now, what the result was, was that we had, you know, we had a dollar value stop loss. And we, when we tested the first system, we, we came up with this as the optimal dollar value stop loss. And let's take a look. See what this chart looks like. So you can even compare the two, kind of. Where the heck are they? Where'd they go to? We're, we're at a different thing. There we go. Okay, here we go. So this was the one with the the regular run, which went up to about uh, over four, about four hundred and fifty thousand or so, or even more. And this one that oh, this one only went up to about a little over four hundred thousand. But note, it's a lot smoother. It doesn't have this nasty thing here. It's just a lot. It has a small one, but not a nasty one like over there. So, but but you know the price you pay because of that set dollar stop loss uh, is you wind up having more losing trades. And, um, but it's kind of like a safety net. Okay. So, so we did that and uh, we came out with this result here now. So what, what are we going to do next? Well, what we're going to do next is we're going to test out those two other groups. Remember, we had group, uh, we have A and B that we use, but we have C and D also. And we found was group C did okay, but but not that great. Um, whereas group D was just disastrous, perfectly losing system. And so what we're going to do is we're going to test out a different exit 
for group C. Okay. Now, one of the things that you may ask at this point here is, what about computerization? Well, fact of the matter is, is we have it already uh, about two thirds computerized. We've got the heavy off the wall stuff that's that's hard to program already done. And what we're going to do is we're going to port it onto TradeStation. So that's uh, that's the name of the game. If you'd like to be part of this project, let me know. Uh, and uh, what we'll probably wind up doing when we're all done is selling it one time to some big firm that understands the value of what we have and really appreciates it. So uh, that's what we're doing. If you ever need to get in touch with me, I'm Ron Janish at gmail.com. Uh, last name's kind of hard to spell, but phone number is easy to remember, 858 Four eight seven five one five one. In the meantime, stay safe.